Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., all rights reserved. Back is 23 after the hour. Thank you for hanging out with me. I'm Jim Blassingame. My website is smallbusinessadvocate.com. Thank you for using it to your advantage. Lots of things there that will help you. Don't forget to check out the blog. The knowledge base is there. The brain trust is there. There's a couple of thousand of the smartest people in the world on small business issues. And uh, also my newsletter. We'll, you can subscribe to that. We'll send that to you every, after, every Sunday afternoon. Get you ready for the week ahead. We've been doing that since 1999. And a, and a poll question on the homepage. Want to know what you think? Every week we ask a different question. Julia Seymour is with us, and she's deposited quite a body of work with us over the years. You can find her place, her suite, on our website. Julia is uh, editor and analyst for the uh, Business and Media Institute. Uh, Julia, give us your website. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Sure. The website is mrc.org slash BMI. So we're easy to find, um, and we... uh, Analyze and expose liberal media bias on a wide range of business and economic just issues. liberal, just liberal bias, not conservative bias. Uh, our organization is conservative because there is conservative bias. Case. You know that, don't you, Julia? Yes, there is, but there are other. But organizations we we like that, that bias, though, right? Is that right, Julia? <laughs> we like that bias. Well, I think any journalist who claims that they're objective should should do their best to be so uh, and deserves to be called out, regardless of what kind of bias they right. show. But specifically, our organization uh, seeks to expose liberal media bias because I think that that is uh, the overwhelming uh, amount of bias with the networks and the cable, uh, as, you know, the CNNs and MSNBCs of the world, as well as the news magazines and the major newspapers. You know what bothers me as much as the debt, Julia, much as much as as runaway our runaway financial uh, condition here in the United States and the inability of our government to. To, to fix it, to deal with it. What bothers me as much as anything is that when we, that the way, the way it's gotten in American politics where if somebody says something that you don't like, mm-hmm. instead of debating that issue, instead of trying, yeah. to, trying to make your point of view uh, you know, right. counter to theirs, you know, whatever, however vociferously you want to debate it, you do, you, instead of doing that, you call them names. You use ad homonyms. Yeah. And I'll tell you something, folks. All of the things, that, as I've said before, I'm not a Tea Party member uh, at all. I've interviewed some of them on my show. But I will tell you, their point of view is valid. It's justified. They have a right to it. And it does not make them any of the things that they've been called. Right. Yeah, name calling is, is not a form of argumentation. In fact, you're kind of admitting that you've lost the argument, I think, if you resort to that tactic. Right. Um Unfortunately, we see it in the in the news media quite a bit. Uh, I did have one point before we change topics. I wanted to say about uh, the budgeting and, and debt issues. Uh, what I was about to say before the break was that uh, this this idea that that you know if you cut something from the projected increase of government yeah. spending is is spending cuts uh, mm-hmm. is an entirely fictional concept. It's called baseline budgeting. Um, it, it is used. By, by politicians and people in Washington constantly, and the media repeat it uncritically, and really that's, uh, that's the problem. So if my, the, if my business says, if I said, okay, I'm going to buy a new jet next year, yeah, and that's, on, that's in my plans, that's, we put that in the, in the budget, never mind, I, I haven't funded it yet, I haven't funded it in the budget, I just right. put it in the budget, in the projected budget for next year, and then somebody says, but wait a minute, we've got to start cutting back, and I say, okay, I just won't buy that jet. Right. <laughs> That's not cutting back. That's not cutting back because it was a fictional thing to start with. Yes. So that's an important thing to remember whenever and you're how much How of much reports. of what was was given up last last week was, was that, that kind of money? Uh, well, since the debt is conti- it will continue to rise by $12 trillion, I would say that none of it was... I mean, I'm, I'm not a budget expert. Someone may be able to say that... That there were some real cuts in there, right. but it's all from a projected, ever increasing mm-hmm. number, 
and that's not right. That's not the way we should be budgeting as as a country. Well, there's another um, there's another side of this thing, Julia, that I want to I want to I want to talk to to get you to comment on, and that is, we keep talking about how are we going to cut, where are we going to cut? It's just too too painful to cut, cut, cut. Right. But but America has something that other countries don't have. Mm-hmm. We have a robust entrepreneurial economy. That yeah. that is now being depressed. It is Absolutely. being it's it's being uh, suppressed, and and we can grow. We can through a combination of cuts and efficiencies and getting rid of things we don't need and yeah. growing our economy. America more than any other country on the planet can work out of these problems. Every one of them. What do you think? Oh, I I agree. Uh, I I think that that uh, businesses know how to do this. It's the yes. government that doesn't know how to do it. Um, because as soon as they say, well, we're going to cut spending for this pet project or this department or whatever, and they're, and, and many times they're not actually cutting spending. They're just going to spend less than they had promised to spend right. on it. Um, they are, you know, if, if it's something that the whichever side wants, they then complain that you're, you know, you're going to make poor, these right. people poor or you're going to hurt them, you're going to hurt whoever you're not giving that money to. But it's, it's not the government's money to give. That's right. And it's and not, even, and it, and it's not it. even money that we have. But I'll tell you something, Julia. Right. Only, currently, only the Tea Party is saying the emperor has no clothes. And that's one of the yeah. things you, people have to give the Tea Party. They are calling things like they are. They're saying it like it is. Hey, Julia, thanks yeah. for being here. Good job today, as always. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Quick break. Stay with me. I'll be right back. It's quick. Insperity presents the Small Business Advocate Show with Jim Blassingame, brought to you by FedEx, CareerBuilder.com, and Palo Alto Software. This is a copyrighted production of Small Business Network, Inc., intended for the private use of our audience. Except as otherwise provided by copyright law, all other copying, redistribution, or publication without prior written consent is prohibited. All rights reserved. Prohibited. All rights reserved. Prohibited.